Hey guys, welcome back to Cyber Platter. Today we'll discuss some of the potential interview questions related to SIM. This is the first part of this series where we talk about SIM mostly related to the interview questions but also to enhance your knowledge. I will link the other videos in the description box. Make sure to go through them as well. The first question is what is SIM and why is it important for an organization security posture? SIM stands for Security, Information and Event Management. It is a comprehensive approach to security management that combines SIM that is Security Information Management and SEM that is Security Event Management into a single solution. SIM systems provide real-time analysis of security alerts generated by various hardware and software systems in an organization's network. The primary goal of SIM is to help organizations detect and respond to security incidents and breaches more effectively by providing a centralized view of the organization's security-related events and activities. Now let's see why SIM is important for an organization's security posture. First one is centralized monitoring and visibility. SIM collects and aggregates data from various sources such as servers, network devices, applications and endpoints. This centralized visibility allows security teams to monitor the entire IT environment from a single location, helping them to detect anomalies and potential threats more efficiently. Next benefit of having a SIM solution is real-time threat detection. SIM systems analyze incoming event data in real time, allowing for the rapid detection of suspicious activities or patterns. By correlating events from different sources, a SIM can identify complex attack scenarios that might go unnoticed when considering individual events in isolation. Then it helps with incident response. SIM plays a crucial role in incident response by providing the necessary data to understand the scope and impact of security incidents. Security teams can use the information provided by the SIM to make informed decisions about containment, eradication and recovery efforts. Next point is compliance and reporting. Many industries are subject to regulatory compliance requirements that mandate the collection and analysis of security related data. A SIM system can automate the process of gathering this information and generating reports that demonstrate compliance with regulations and standards. Next is it helps to reduce the dwell time. Dwell time refers to the duration an attacker remains undetected within a network after gaining unauthorized access. SIM systems help reduce dwell time by swiftly identifying and responding to security incidents, thereby minimizing the potential damage caused by attackers. Next one is threat intelligence integration. SIM solutions can integrate with external threat intelligence feeds to enhance their capabilities in identifying emerging threats and known attack patterns. This integration helps organizations stay updated on the latest attack methods and indicators of compromise. Next one is forensics and investigation. In the event of a security breach, SIM's historical data and logs can be used for forensic analysis. This allows security teams to trace the origin of the attack, identify affected systems, and understand the attacker's tactics, techniques, and procedures, that is TTPs. Next one is user behavior monitoring. SIM solutions can help monitor user behavior and detect deviations from normal patterns of activity. This is helpful for identifying insider threats, compromised accounts, or unauthorized access attempts. So in summary, SIM is important for an organization's security posture because it provides the tools and capabilities needed to effectively monitor, detect, respond to, and mitigate security threats and incidents. It offers a comprehensive view of an organization's security landscape, aiding in both proactive and reactive security measures. Now let's move on to the next question. A typical SIM architecture consists of several essential components that work together to collect, store, analyze, and manage security-related data and events from various sources within an organization's IT environment. 
let's see some of the basic components of a sim architecture now first one is data sources so what are data sources right these are systems devices applications and endpoints that generate logs and security related events these sources include firewall intrusion detection and prevention systems servers network switches antivirus software other tools and more data sources provide the raw event data that the sim collects and analyzes then the next component is connectors connectors are data collection agents these are responsible for collecting event data from various data sources and sending it to the sim platform these agents normalize and transform the raw logs into a common format suitable for analysis then we have storage once the data is collected it needs to be stored in a secure and scalable manner sim platforms store this data in a central repository which can be a database or a distributed storage system logs are indexed and organized for efficient querying and retrieval then we have normalization and parsing raw log data from different sources can have varying formats and structures normalization is converting these logs into a consistent format this makes it easier to compare and analyze events from different sources parsing involves extracting relevant information from logs such as timestamps source ip addresses destination ip addresses event types and more next is event correlation event correlation is a crucial component of sim it involves analyzing events from different sources to identify patterns and relationships that could indicate a potential security threat correlation rules are defined to trigger a alerts or actions when specific combinations of events occur helping to detect complex attack scenarios then we have alerting engine this is responsible for generating alerts and these alerts are generated based on predefined rules and correlation patterns when certain events or conditions match these rules alerts are generated and sent to security analysts for further investigation next is dashboard and visualization then platforms provide dashboards and visualization tools that offer real time historical insights into security events these visualizations help security teams monitor the organization security posture detect anomalies and quickly assess the severity of incidents then the next one is threat intelligence uh, integration Sims can integrate with external threat intelligence feeds providing up to date information about known threats patterns and indicators of compromise that is IOCs this integration enhances the sims capability to identify and respond to emerging threats next component of sim is ir workflow many sim solutions offer features that facilitate incident response workflows these might include ticketing systems case management and collaboration tools this enables security teams to coordinate and document their response efforts next one is compliance and reporting sim platforms often include reporting features that allow organizations to generate compliance reports executive summaries and custom reports based on the collected security data these reports are crucial for demonstrating regulatory compliance and providing insights to stakeholders next one is data analytics and uh, machine learning some advanced sims incorporate data analytics and machine learning to detect anomalies identify behavioral patterns and improve threat detection accuracy over time then the next component is archiving and retention long term storage of historical data is important for compliance and forensic purposes sims may include archiving and retention features to manage data storage over extended periods the next component is user and access management user and access management is a 
critical component in a sim architecture that deals with roles permissions and access controls related to the sim platform itself this component ensures that only authorized personnel have access to the sim system and its functionalities a sim system typically supports multiple user roles with varying levels of access and permissions like administrators security analysts auditors managers right administrators will have higher privileges for configuring and managing the sim while analysts might have access to monitoring investigation um is looking at the alerts and generating reports the sim itself should log user activities and changes made to the system's configuration these audit logs are important for accountability compliance and investigating any potential insider threats or or unauthorized access sim should also have robust authentication and authorization right like you're using multi factor authentication for uh, accessing sim platform so these are some of the components of sim in summary a sim architecture combines data collection store storage normalization correlation alerting visualization and other capabilities to provide a comprehensive solution for monitoring and managing an organization's security events and threats let's go to the next question describe the role of data collection in a sim system data collection is a fundamental aspect of sim system it involves gathering aggregating and normalizing security related data from various sources with in an organization's IT environment the role of data collection in a sim system is crucial for enabling effective threat detection incident response compliance monitoring and overall security management let's see a little bit more in depth about data collection the first point is related to source diversity sim systems collect data from wide variety of sources including network devices like firewalls routers switches or servers endpoints applications databases security appliances and more each of these sources generates logs and events that provide insights into the activities and behavior occurring within an organization's it infrastructure next is real time data ingestion question Data collection involves the continuous and real-time ingestion of various event data from various sources. This data is transmitted to the SIM platform using various methods such as syslog, APIs, agents, and connectors. Then there is log normalization and transformation. Raw log data from different sources often have different formats and structures. Data collection processes include log normal normalization like i mentioned before log normalization is where the data is transformed into a common format and structure making it easier to analyze and correlate events from various sources then there is data enrichment as part of the data collection process additional contextual information can be added to the collected data this enrichment includes details such as user identities uh, asset information threat intelligence data and more enrichment enhances the value of the collected data by providing additional context for analyzing then the next one is parsing and categorization the collected data is parsed to extract relevant information like i mentioned before it's like time stamps source and destination ip addresses event types and so on this parsing helps in organizing the data and making it more manageable for analysis then there is event filtering and reduction not all collected data is relevant for security analysis data collection processes often invo involve filtering out noise or less relevant events focusing on the events that have the potential to indicate security threats and anomalies next is data integrity and security data collection processes ensure that the collected data is accurate and hasn't been tampered with security mechanisms are put in place to protect the 
data during transmission, ensuring the confidentiality and integrity of the information being collected. Then we have scalability and performance. Some systems need to handle a high volume of data generated by diverse sources. Data collection mechanisms are designed to scale efficiently to accommodate the data volume and maintain performance even in large and complex environments. Then we have real-time analysis. The collected data is used for real-time analysis, which involves comparing events, identifying patterns, and detecting potential security threats as they happen. Real-time analysis enables rapid incident detection and response. Next is long-term storage and retention. While real-time analysis is crucial, historical data is also valuable for forensic investigations, compliance audits, and trend analysis. Data collection processes often involve archiving and retaining data for extended periods. So in summary, the role of data collection in a SIM system is to capture, normalize, enrich, and organize security-related data from diverse sources. This data serves as the foundation for various SIM functionalities, including threat detection, incident response, compliance, reporting, and overall security management. Let's go to the next question, which is describe some best practices for tuning and optimizing a SIM system. Tuning and optimizing a SIM system is essential to ensure its effectiveness in detecting threats, minimizing false positives, and providing actionable insights. So some of the best practices are, first one is, define clear objectives. Establish clear goals and objectives for your SIM implementation. Understand what you want to achieve, such as specific threat detection scenarios, compliance requirements, operational efficiency, etc. Second best practice is to start small. Begin with a focus scope before expanding to cover a wide range of log sources and use cases. Starting small allows you to refine your processes and rules effectively before scaling up. Third best practice is understanding your environment. Gain a deep understanding of your organization's IT environment, including network architecture, critical assets, typical user behavior, and applications. This understanding helps in creating accurate detection rules. Next one is log source prioritization. Prioritize collecting and analyzing logs from critical assets and high-risk areas. Focus on sources that provide the most valuable information for threat detection and incident response. And then we have fine-tune detection rules. SIMs come with default detection rules, but they should be customized to match your environment and threat landscape. Adjust thresholds, conditions, and correlation rules to reduce false positives while ensuring important alerts are not missed. Next is regular review. Conduct regular reviews of detection rules, correlation logic, and event patterns. Threats and attack methods evolve, so your detection rules need to be updated accordingly. Next is threat intelligence integration. Incorporate threat intelligence feeds to enhance the accuracy of your SIM. This enables the system to identify known indicators of compromise IOCs and patterns associated with current th attack campaigns. Next is behavioral analysis. Leverage behavioral analytics and machine learning to detect anomalies and deviations from baseline behavior. This is particularly useful for identifying unknown threats and insider threats. Next is data retention policy. Establish a data retention policy that defines how long even data is stored. Long-term storage aids in forensic investigations and compliance reporting, but it's important to balance retention with storage costs. Then is automated response. Implement automated response actions for certain scenarios, such as isolating compromised devices or blocking malicious IP addresses. However, ensure these actions are well-tested and have fail-safes in place. 
Next is user training. Train your security analysts and IT staff on using the SIM effectively, understanding how to navigate the interface, interpret alerts and investigate incidents is crucial for maximizing the system's value. Next is regular performance assessment. Monitor the performance of your SIM to identify bottlenecks, resource utilization issues and any scalab scalability concerns. Regular assessments help you optimize resource allocation. Next is scalability planning. Plan for scalability from the outset. As your organization grows, your sims should be able to handle increased data volume without compromising performance. Next is collaboration and documentation. Foster collaboration among your security teams. Maintain documentation for detection rules, incident response procedures, and system configurations to ensure consistency. Next is continuous improvement. Regularly review and improve your SIMS configuration rules and processes. Implement lessons learned from past incidents and adjust your approach accordingly. Next is vendor support and updates. Stay updated with the latest releases, patches and updates from your SIM vendor. This ensures that you benefit from new features, bug fixes and security enhancements. So remember that tuning and optimizing a SIM is an ongoing process that requires continuous monitoring, adjustments and adaption to changing threats, landscapes and organizational needs. So the next question is what considerations should be taken into account when scaling a SIM solution for a large enterprise? Scaling a SIM solution for a large enterprise involves careful planning and execution to ensure that the system can handle the increased data volume, complexity and requirements of a larger organization. Let's see some of those considerations here. First one is data volume and velocity. Large enterprises generate a substantial amount of event and data ensure that the SIM architecture is designed to handle the increased data volume and real-time event velocity without sacrificing performance. Next is architecture design. Choose an architecture that is both horizontally and vertically scalable. This allows you to add more resources such as resource servers and storage as needed to accommodate growing demands. Next is high availability. Implement redundancy and failover mechanisms to ensure high availability for the SIM system. Distributed architect architectures and load balancing can help prevent single points of failure. Next is performance testing. Conduct thorough performance testing to assess how the SIM system handles increased data loads. Identify bottlenecks and optimize the system uh, accordingly. Next is Scalable storage. Implement scalable and high performance storage solutions to handle the storage requirements of large volumes of event data while maintaining quick access times. Next is network bandwidth. Ensure that your network infrastructure can handle the increased data traffic between data sources and the SIM system. Network bottlenecks can impact data collection and analysis. Next is log source integration. Consider the diversity of log sources within a large enterprise. Ensure that the SIM can integrate with a wide range of systems, devices and applications. Next is data retention and archiving. Develop a data retention strategy that balances the need for retaining historical data with storage costs. Archiving mechanisms can help manage long-term storage. Next is event correlation and processing. As the number of events increases, efficient event correlation becomes even more important. Optimize correlation rules to detect complex attack scenarios without overwhelming the system. Next is alerting and response. Ensure that the SIM can generate alerts and notifications at scale while maintaining their accuracy and relevance. Implement automated response actions to handle repetitive tasks. Next is threat intel uh, integration. I've described this before as well. Scale your threat intelligence feeds to match the increased data volume. Regularly update threat intelligence sources to stay current with emerging threats. Next is user access role management. As the organization grows, user access and role management become crucial. Implement robust access controls and role-based permissions to manage user interactions with the SIM. Next is resource allocation. 
monitor resource utilization such as cpu memory storage allocate resources dynamically based on demand to maintain optimal performance next is customization and flexibility large enterprises often have unique security needs choose a sim solution that offers flexibility and customization to address specific use cases and requirements next is training and skill sets ensure that your security team is adequately trained to manage and operate the scale sim environment large scale sims require skilled personnel for effective management next is vendor support and collaboration maintain a strong relationship with your sim vendor they can provide guidance on scaling best practices and support for any challenges you encounter next is compliance and reporting large enterprises often have complex compliance requirements ensure that your scale sim solution can generate the necessary reports and audit trails to meet these demands next is continuous monitoring and optimization scaling is an ongoing process regularly monitor system performance evaluate its effectiveness and make necessary adjustments to ensure optimal performance as the organization evolves Scaling a sim solution for a large enterprise is complex and it requires careful planning, technical expertise and deep understanding of the organization security needs and IT environment. Let's go to the next question now. How do you ensure the integrity and confidentiality of logs collected by a sim? Ensuring the integrity and confidentiality of logs collected by a sim system is crucial for maintaining the security and trustworthy of the entire security infrastructure let's see some of the measures and best practices to achieve this first one is secure communication in this we have encryption implement secure transport protocols like tls ssl to encrypt log data in transit between log sources and the sim platform this prevents eavesdropping and data interception next is vpn and secure communication that is virtual private network for remote log sources consider using vpn connections to establish encrypted tunnels ensuring data remains confidential during transmission the next measure is access control in this we have authentication enforce strong authentication mechanisms for log sources and sim access multi factor authentication that is mfa adds an extra layer of security next is authorization grant log source access and sim access only to authorized users role based access control ensures that users have the appropriate level of access next is least privilege apply the principle of least privilege giving users and systems only the necessary permissions to perform their tasks next measure is log source hardening in this we have secure configuration securely configure log sources to minimize potential vulnerabilities disable unnecessary services and protocols then we have logging mechanisms implement secure logging mechanisms with log sources to ensure the integrity of the logs they generate next best practice is related to data encryption in this we have encryption at rest encrypt log data stored on disk to protect it from unauthorized access and in case of physical theft or you know sometimes data breaches and then we have database encryption if the sim stores data in a database consider database level encryption to protect sensitive information next is centralized log collection this we have central repository collect logs in a centralized location ensuring all logs are sent to a single secure destination next one is log forwarding use secure log forwarding mechanisms to transmit logs from remote sites to the central sim platform next measure is monitoring and intrusion detection so in this we have first one is to monitor log integrity implement secure mechanisms to monitor the integrity of logs such as file integrity monitoring that is fim this is to detect any tampering or unauthorized modifications next is sim itself implement intrusion detection and monitoring for the sim system to prevent unauthorized access and protect against attacks targeting the sim platform the next one is secure storage in this we have data segregation isolate log data from other types of data to prevent unauthorized access and breaches 
Next is data uh, encryption. Like mentioned before, consider encrypting log data at rest and ensure the confidentiality of stored logs. Next measure is regular auditing and review. In this, we have log reviews. Regularly review logs to identify any unusual activities or signs of tampering. Automated log analysis can assist in identifying anomalies. This we have again configuration audits. Periodically audit the SIM systems configurations, ensuring that security settings are correctly configured. Next one is incident response. Establish incident response procedures to address security incidents related to log data. Rapid response is crucial to prevent further compromise. Next is compliance with regulations. Implement measures to ensure compliance with industry regulations and data protection laws that pertain to the confidentiality and integrity of data. Next one is vendor security. Ensure that the SIM solution and third party log collection tools meet security standards and adhere to best practices for data protection. You can consider vendor assessment here. Next is data retention. Define a data retention policy for logs, specifically how long logs will be retained and when they should be securely archived or deleted. In summary, ensuring the integrity and confidentiality of logs collected by SM requires a multifaceted approach that includes secure communication, access controls, encryption, centralized collection, monitoring, auditing, and compliance measures. It's important to adopt a comprehensive strategy that addresses both technical and procedural aspects to maintain the security of your logs log data. Let's move on to the next question. Explain the difference between structured logs and unstructured logs. Structured logs and unstructured logs refer to two different formats in which event data is recorded and stored. These formats have distinct characteristics and implications for how the data can be processed, analyzed and interpreted. So structured logs are event records that follow a predefined format with well organized fields and consistent data types. Each log entry is composed of distinct elements that are labeled and organized in a consistent manner. Structured logs are easily passed and can be read by automated systems without ambiguity. So structured logs have a fixed format that includes predefined fields with consistent data types. Like I mentioned before, the format is typically standardized across all log entries. And then I mentioned about field labels. Uh, these can be timestamp, source IP, event type, user ID, and so on. Structured logs lend themselves well to automated analysis, correlation, and aggregation. SIM systems can easily parse and analyze structured logs for patterns and anomalies. Also, due to their organized structure, it's relatively straightforward to search for specific information within structured logs using keywords or queries. Now, we'll talk about unstructured logs. Unstructured logs, on the other hand, do not adhere to a fixed format. They may lack predefined fields or labels, and the data within them can vary widely in terms of content and structure. Unstructured logs often contain text narratives or freeform descriptions of events which can make automated processing and analysis more challenging. Because there is no consistent structure, parsing unstructured un uh, logs can be more complex. Extracting specific information may require more advanced text analysis techniques. Unstructured logs may require manual review and interpretation by humans to understand the events they describe, especially when automated tools struggle to process them accurately. While automated systems can still process unstructured logs to some extent, their lack of consistent structure makes automated analysis, correlation and aggregation more challenging. So in summary, structured logs have a predefined format with consistent fields, which facilitates automated processing and analysis. Unstructured logs lack a fixed format and may contain narrative descriptions, making automated processing more difficult. The choice between structured and unstructured logs often depends on the specific use case, the level of automation required, and the nature of the data being recorded. Let's move to the next question. 
What is a correlation rule in a SIM and how is it configured? A correlation rule in a SIM system is a predefined logic or condition that identifies relationships and patterns among multiple individual events. Correlation rules are used to detect complex security incidents or attack scenarios that might involve multiple steps or events occurring across different systems or sources. These rules allow the SIM to piece together seemingly unrelated events to identify potentially malicious or unauthorized activities. Configuring a correlation rule involves defining the criteria or conditions that when met indicate a specific security event or security. Let's see a general overview of how correlation rules are configured in a SIM. First step is to identify the use case. Determine the specific scenario or use case you want the correlation rule to address. For example, detecting a potential account compromise, detecting lateral movement within the network or identifying a phishing campaign. Next is to define the conditions. Specify the conditions or triggers that must be met for the rule to get activated. Conditions can include event types, event sources, IP addresses, user identities, time frames, and so on. For example, the condition could be if three failed login attempts from different source IP addresses are detected within five minutes for the same user account, trigger this alert. Next one is establish the logic. Define the logic for the correlation. This involves specifying how the event should be related or sequenced to trigger the rule. For instance, the logic could be if three failed login attempts from different source IP addresses are detected within five minutes for the same user account and followed by a successful login from a different source IP address, trigger this alert. Next is set severity levels. Assign a severity level to the correlation rule to indicate its importance. This helps prioritize incidents for investigation and response. Next is specify actions. Determine the actions the SIM should take when the correlation rule is triggered. Actions can include generating an alert, sending notifications, initiating automated responses, or escalating the incident. Next is to test and refine. Before deploying the correlation rule, test it in a controlled environment or against historical data to ensure it's accurately identifying the desired scenarios. Refine the rule based on test results and any adjustments needed to reduce false positives or negatives. Next is implement the rule. Enter the defined conditions, logic, severity, and actions into the SIMS rule configuration interface. Enable the rule to start monitoring events and and triggering alerts when the specified conditions are met. Next is monitoring and maintenance. Continuously monitor the performance and effectiveness of the correlation rule. Regularly review and update rules based on changes in the threat landscape or adjustments to your organization's infrastructure. So correlation rules require a good understanding of your organization's IT environment, common attack patterns, and potential threat scenarios. They play a critical role role in automating the detection of advanced and complex security threats that might go unnoticed when analyzing individual events in isolation. So that's it for today, guys. This is the part one of the series where we talk about SIM. There'll be more videos. I'll link it in the description box if you're interested to learn more questions and to enhance your knowledge. If you like today's video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share our videos. I will see you in another episode. Until then, bye-bye.